Dua menit lagi. Ya, selain mahasiswanya, Pak Azmi ada juga nanti uh, ya para master student, PhD student khususnya di Koba ya, di riset hmm. group, Koba riset group akan join juga. Sure, sure. Halo, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, Prof. Waalaikumsalam, Prof. Unai. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Armi, for your attending to our class. Thank you for inviting me, Prof. I'm just a small uh, person in this field, so I'm happy to be here and share with the, the others regarding what we can do and Uh, in the future, insyaAllah, hopefully. Our collaborations will be fruitful in the insya future. Insyaallah, insyaAllah. Insyaallah. Okay. <coughs> Kita tunggu satu menit lagi barangkali ya. Sampai boleh, kita boleh. Ini satu. Iya, Prof. Ona. Sinyalnya ya, kayaknya Prof. Ona itu sinyalnya. Kenapa? Di, di jalan kelihatannya. Lagi di ya, jalan. Iya. 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 Halo. Pak Ditik. Mohon Prof. <laughs> Tunggu nge-freeze lagi ya? Ada? Oh, enggak, enggak, enggak nge-freeze, Pak. Oke. Masih 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 jalan Pak Ditik yang Pak Unang. Uh, sudah jam satu lewat satu apa dimulai saja? Oke, okay, let's start, Dokter Ani. Ya, ya. ya, Bismillahirrohmanirrohim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good afternoon uh, to all of the participants in this lecture. Welcome to the guest lecture for a subject of selected topics in natural product chemistry. Yes, today's lecture is quite special because uh, one of the topics for this subject will be delivered by our international collaborator, Dr. Muhammad Nurul Azmi from, Univers from University of Science Malaysia, Penang. Dr. Azmi uh, will give a lecture with the title of Application of Natural Product in Industry. Before we start, allow me to read the brief curriculum vitae of Dr. Azmi. Dr. Muhammad Nurul Azmi obtained his bachelor and master degree in University Science Malaysia under the supervision of Professor uh, Halija Awang from yeah, University Malaysia. And then he did the joint PhD degree between University Malaya and Ecole Polytechnic, France. And after that, uh, he joined uh, University uh, Science Malaysia He is currently a senior lecturer in School of Chemical Sciences in this university. His research field is natural product chemistry and also synthesis of organic and medicinal chemistry. His work in this field has been published in many international and reputable scientific journals. So that is the brief CP of Dr. Azmi. Now, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Azmi. Dr. Dr. Ani? Yes. Hello? Yes. yes I Dr. think uh, Dr. Ajmi uh, graduate uh, bachelor and master in not <laughs> Correct. So I'm sorry, Dr. Az 
Dr. Azmi. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's, okay. Oh. <laughs> it's not important actually. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah, thanks, Prof. So uh, yeah, because because I know I know very well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, should I revise? Yeah. Yes. Uh, can I start my my presentations? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just just a moment, Doctor Azmi. Uh, okay. 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 Please yeah. Continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think yes, I would like to welcome uh, Doctor Azmi to give today's lecture. Uh, and to Doctor Azmi, time is yours. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, everybody. So. Good afternoon. Thanks for the kind invitations regarding myself. So um, my name is uh, Muhammad Nur Azmi and I'm joining School of Computer Sciences, University of Science Malaysia since 2016, after I coming back from postgraduate <coughs> regarding <coughs> in France in 2016 and I come back around a day before in the future. So uh, for today, I will, firstly, I would like to say thank you to Prof Hunans for the kind invitations regarding the presentation today. And I'm also thank you to Dr. Rani Maharani and also uh, <clears throat> our colleagues and also lecturers and students from Universitas Pajajarans. And for today's sessions, I'm happy to be here and with everybody and you all guys. So for today, I would like to share what uh, I find during uh, in natural product chemistry regarding the application in industry. So, Something just as uh, speed uh, regarding my, myself. Uh, I just uh, uh, I'm a lecturer for at the School of Chemical Sciences, USM, for five years now. So uh, I'm also a research fellow, uh, Institute of Pharmaceutical and Nutraceutical, which is belong to another ministry, Ministry of Higher Education, uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovations. And also during my PhD, I have two PhD actually. So one's from University of Malaya, specifically in natural products and also uh, from Ecole Polytechnique in France uh, uh, in organic synthesis. And I'm also a member of uh, Malaysian Nature Product Society, uh, Institute of Chemia Malaysia and also Associated Chimie de France. So for uh, rough introductions regarding the nature products, uh, what we know and I believe uh, everybody have known about the nature products, why well, I can classify these uh, natural products and metabolites isolated from uh, flora, fauna, and microbes. And I believe uh, the team of Professor Nang and uh, his colleague working on secondary metabolites, not primary metabolites. So, and I would like to highlight here, once we already isolate the, the pure compounds, usually we are doing some testings and applications. And we believe that natural products have to working alone, to get working uh, together with the synthesis organics. And in industry, synthesis organic is a huge and very interesting uh, topics because they have a criteria that we can say the criteria for the elegant synthesis. The first one by replacing the stoichiometric reactions by catalytic reactions. It means we can reduce the cost and everything. The second one is to employ the selective synthesis instead of unselective synthesis. For example, we want to uh, we want to acetate compounds, and we are doing by using DMAP, dimethyl aminopyridines, in catalytic amounts. At the same time, by, by using acetate and hydrox, we can get the very beautiful and effective compounds. The third one, what we can uh, consider as an elegant synthesis is avoiding protective rule because it will increase uh, the step of reactions. At the same time, probably it will decrease the yield of products because we have to protect and deprotect. So the, the fourth one is a combining reaction steps or what we call what we call in organic chemistry, we call multi-step reactions. So the last one by improving material and energy balance, uh, most of the reactions uh, live uh, the safe, the, the easiest one the reactions, what we can classify is it's a react in, at room temperature at or atmosphere pressures. So this is a kind of uh, two example of uh, uh, elegant synthesis. The first one is a synthesis of indigo. Uh, indigo so is a color, a very nice color. Then, and they have been synthesized and 
produced by Adolf von Bayer uh, at the same time together working with BSF. And uh, they are doing total synthesis by using auto nitro benzaldehyde, uh, benzal which is this, this compounds, and uh, will uh, react with acetone and the sodium hydroxides, and they will give the indigo. And they are using this color in textile industry. And the second one is vanillins. I, I believe Indonesia is uh, one of the most production uh, vanilla flavor in the world. So um, this is the most aroma chemical uh, part of methanol. And in this uh, synthesis uh, for synthesis of vanillins, uh, they are start from phenol, which is easy to find it. And they are doing with four step ration, they can get finally there. Vanillins. They are using in perfumery, uh, fragrance, and also foods. In natural products uh, in industry, we can classify into six uh, small group which is related with natural product. The first one is colorines, is colors regarding the colors. The second one is flavor and fra fragrance for perfumery, something like that. And pharmaceuticals. This is uh, the common know about the application in natural products in industries. And the, la uh, this, the fourth one is hormones, prostaglandins, uh, sex hormones, something like that. And vanillins, uh, vitamins, mm -hmm. vitamins A, vitamin B, and vitamin D. And agrochemicals for the pesticides and uh, control uh, <clears throat> regarding the uh, biological <clears throat> natures. So the last one is uh, amino acids. So I have uh, taken a few examples, what we could discuss uh, in the previous slides. The first one what we, we can discuss is about the colorants. So uh, I'm interested about the alizarines because uh, this compound has been isolated uh, from the rubia tonkorums, which is what we, call, we can find in some Middle East. And they use is a dye stuff, which is the red colors. And because uh, they call alizarin because the Arabic names they, they mean is, uh, great goods. And they are first natural products to prepare industrially on large scales. And uh, for the structural elucidated, it's uh, finished by 1868 by Grebe and also Lieberman's from Berlin Trade and Academy. It means during the time they have already used this kind of alizarin as a dye stuff in uh, fabrics, for example. This is uh, the structure of alizarines. <clears throat> and also this is the kind of the plants of rubia tonkorums. So for industrial synthesis, uh, uh, Caro from Besef, uh, in collaboration of Grebe and also Lieberman's, which is the first uh, find the structure of alizarines, starts to synthesize uh, these alizarine structures. So they are start for anthracenes by react with uh, hydro, uh, nitric acids and to give the anthraquinones and lastly react with sulfuric acid to give sulfur, uh, by doing sulfonations to give the anthraquinone two metal sulfonic, okay, because this one is the two sulfonic acids and lastly react with sodium hydroxides and oxygen gas and they give the alizarines. So second one is a flavor and fragrance. You know, we love perfume, something like that. Okay. So for the worldwide turnover of fragrance and flavors, uh, market about 11 billion euro volumes. So we can see the distributions of uh, worldwide turnover for fragrance and also uh, flavor markets. In a uh, fragrance market, it's cover around 4 billion euros. And we, if we do some breakups, uh, 30% is related with the soap and detergents. 30% is a cosmetic and personal hygiene. And it's covered 20% for perfumery and also 10% for industrial products. So for examples, isomyl salicylate. This is the isomyl salicylate, very simple structures, okay? This is a sense reminiscent of blooming clover, okay? and uh, imparting the typical notes of truffle incarnate in 1969. This is uh, truffle incarnate, which is the French names. Uh, in addition, this kind of compound like uh, Coco Chanel, uh, if you know Coco Chanel, no, uh, Chanel numero song, numero five, Chanel numero five, like this. They have the 
some of the top note for the channel, no me for some. So for today, what we call 150 natural essential oil uh, face the challenge to fight with 3,000 synthetic fragrance. And 75, among 3,000 synthetic fragrance, 75% is chemical synthesis and only 25 obtained uh, from biological source like aromatic plants, which is cultivated in uh, Mediterranean regions, Southeast Asia, like Malaysia and Indonesia, and also Latin America, because the climates, uh, it's a good climate to, to, to cultivate this kind of aromatic plants. And this table I have shown uh, some of example of the important compounds that can be accessible during 19th centuries by using synthetic methods. So another example for the fragrance is the um, menthol. Okay, normally we can find menthol, I feel the menthol in uh, chewing gums, something like that. It's a principal component of Japanese uh, peppermint oil, or what we call corn meal, okay, menta albanensis. So there's another source of menthol also, like peppermint, spearmint, and water mints, okay. Uh, peppermint and spearmint is a kind of a famous uh, source of menthols. And for the application for this kind of menthol is aromatized in medicines, beverage, and food stuff. This is the an example of figure of peppermint and also conmin. So, so uh, everybody have studied the natural products and have to understand the biosynthesis of menthol, especially for the terpene groups. So what we can say, the, the biosynthesis uh, of menthol is coming from terpene groups uh, with the starting, mat um, starting material with isoprene units. And this kind of, uh, they can start with the geranyl diphosphate, which is coming from the isopentyl, isopentyl, isopentyl uh, diphosphate, and also dimethyl allyl diphosphate. Yeah. And after that, they are <clears throat> doing condensation reaction to give geranyl diphosphate and also cyclized to give the limonin. Limonin usually the main component in limau, okay? Orange, for example, like that. So, and limonin have, uh, goes to the uh, hydrosylation process, which is at a carbon tree and introduce the OH functional groups, will give the trans isopenperitinol uh, and they are, do, face the subsequent reductions, first one, second one, and the third one, and give the three serogenic centers and a summarization of double bond of isopolygonon. This is isopolygonons, two polygonons, and reductions of double bond here to give the, uh, result, to give the result of inversion serogenic center in carbon four which is the menthol. In this case, menthol have three serogenic centers that we can see the variety of menthol analogs. So in terms of serogenic chemistry, I believe everybody have, uh, for the students, uh, has know about the serogenic, serogenic chemistry for the first year of your studies in undergraduate process. So uh, in this case, menthol have three serogenic centers and they will give a four enantiomer pair are possible. For the diastromers, for the mentals, they will give the new, new mentals. This is the new mentals, isomentol and new isomentol. And for the label rotary parts, it will give the some smell of fresh, sweet, and minty. This is uh, to get this uh, label structures, uh, they are usually used as synthetic method to get. For this uh, dextro structures, they will give a smell some dusty, herbal, and faintly minty. Okay, normally with, with this uh, label structure of menthol, usually using in our <clears throat> toothpaste, soap, and fragrance. So, in terms of industrial synthesis, uh, they have three uh, major synthesis of mentals. Okay, the first one is Harman Raymer process. And the second one is Takasago process and recently have been developed by Bessef process. But in this, uh, in this uh, lectures, uh, we would like to introduce about a Harman-Raymond process 
because I think it's better to learn from the first uh, route of synthesis in industries. They are starting from m cresol because uh, we are, can easily gather m cresols by using aluminum as the alkylated catalyst with the propane and to give thymol. And after that, followed by hydrogenations to give a resonance of metals with plus and minus uh, uh, isomers. And at the same time, they will give the new mentals, isomentals, and also new isomentals. And by using uh, fractional distillations, they are easily separate this kind of mentals and their stereoisomers. And after that, they are going following trust esterifications by using metal benzoates because we want to capture the specific uh, orientations of orientation of mentals and after that we know because the, the structures and the molecular mass of this compound are getting increased is help us to do uh, crystallizations and after that uh, doing uh, hydrolysis of these functional groups benzoate groups and doing recrystallizations and finally we get minus menthol in good yield which is a 90 percent so for the pharmaceuticals, this is very interesting because everybody are working on drugs and discoveries and medicines, something like that. And I have a few examples about the pharmaceutical examples. And why natural products are very useful in drug discovery. This is the recent data because I, I get this data in 2019. Okay, we can see the chart pie here because we can see uh, all the contributions of natural products, natural products as a botanical crude extract. I mean, they are using crude extracts to treat a disease. This is very famous for the TCM, the traditional Chinese medicines. Are you, this is very terms that uh, people worldwide knows about this one, traditional medicines, traditional Chinese medicines compared to Ayurvedic and also Malay, Malay herbs. So, so for the, this kind of ND uh, derived from natural products, okay, total synthesis of drugs, biological made by synthesis, but the pharmacophore was from natural products. It means we are using natural product as the pharmacophore and doing some kind of synthesis or modification to increase the uh, potential of that particular compounds. And the last one, vaccines, which is uh, what we have today for the coronavirus and again i will just want to highlight uh, natural products is a secondary metabolite usually highlight uh, isolated from uh, flora and fauna and also microorganisms like fungi something like that and recently they are using different approach uh, for the uh, finding new natural products uh, or bioactive natural products by using systematic approach high throughput screening for examples molecular dockings, molecular dynamics, uh, metabolomics, omics approach. And, uh, but <clears throat> it will have to speed it up the, the, the search of uh, natural products. So uh, the research domains, uh, they usually they are prefer to work on enzymes based on my experience, diabetic, tropical disease, and also cancers. So this is the kind of blockbuster drugs uh, store. Uh, okay, like like Lipitor is very uh, very famous drugs by Pfizer for the cholesterol is cover around 10.3 billions. Eh? And uh, for example, another example is Zoco for cholesterol so produced by Merck. Okay, this is Zoco by Merck. Uh, Zipresa by Eli Lili. Eli Lili. Uh, by antipsychotics, high blood pressure, and uh, this is very famous drugs, uh, Norvex by Pfizer, okay, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, because the big, big pharmaceutical company have the, um, have the strength in terms of innovations and also budget in terms of uh, synthesize or make this kind of, of drugs. And drug discovery and developments, it's take around 10 to 15 years average. And we need a huge budget and expenditure to, to do that because we have they have some stage that we have to follow 
In this case, we have five levels. The first level is the discovery and development, which is what we call basic research. Uh, in my lab, usually this is the, what we do, basic research, uh, isolate compounds, synthesize, uh, synthesize the compound, determine the structures, and do in vitro studies. The second one is a preclinical research and developments. Okay, this is uh, before we are going to the clinical research. And the third one is the clinical research and trials, which is very important so before we can register this kind of drugs or compounds or this kind of um, vaccines for FDA approvals. The fourth one, FDA approvals and reviews. And the last one, if they after get the approvals, and they are still under observations by this body, by post-market safety monitoring. This is what uh, the five, fifth, uh, the five level that uh, everybody have to face if we, you want to do the drug discovery and development. So this is kind of a figure about the drug development pipelines. Again, for the basic research, it take a few, a few, a few years to, to complete this one. Preclinical developments, trial, and also FDA filing approval. They have another one after this kind of signage. It's a post monitoring. Okay, in this one, uh, for the basic research, we can find the leak identifications, synthesis scale up, in vitro pharmacology. If they, and after that, go into preclinical pre developments. They have so many. Um, uh, phase that they have to do, like toxicity, stability, pharmacology analysis, biomarkers, and uh, assay metabolites, and something like that. If they are not satisfied with the result, they have to go back to the basis research and do it again and again. That's why for the uh, drug developments, it will take around 10 to 15 years. I have some videos here, so I think I can play it. Hopefully, you can listen it. Have you listened this video? Have you heard this video? Yes. The five steps in the drug development process. There are five steps in the drug development process that together are designed to help ensure that potential new therapies are both safe and effective. Step number one, discovery and development. Discovery is the exploratory phase where researchers are focused on understanding all of the ways that a rare disease affects patients and what potential approaches may stop, slow, or reverse the effects of a condition. Once a promising treatment option is found, researchers conduct experiments to find out how a therapy may work and how it might interact with other compounds in the human body. This is called development. <laughs> Preclinical research. During this phase, studies are conducted in the laboratory and in animals to focus on the most promising treatment candidates and delivery methods, determine whether they can safely be tested in humans, and establish an initial dosing level for clinical trials. This phase includes clinical trials that are most likely to bring patients away in the right amount. Clinical testing must follow specific sources and meet defined standards. Before beginning, drug developers must submit an investigation bug, IND application to the drug administration okay, that includes all of this data to support starting a clinical trial. The IND must be reviewed and approved by FDA prior to any clinical research being initiated. Step number three, clinical research. Clinical research refers to studies that involve testing treatments to determine their safety and effectiveness in humans. Researchers design clinical trials to answer specific research questions, with trials following a study plan called a protocol. FDA conducts ongoing reviews of the data to check that safety standards are met and benefit is likely before clinical trials are able to move from small-scale pilot studies to larger studies with more participants. Step number four, FDA review. To start the review of a proposed new therapy, a drug developer submits a new drug application, NDA, or a biologics license application, BLA, depending on the type of treatment. FDA review teams examine all of the data collected from the start of preclinical research 
through completed clinical trials and make a decision to approve or not to approve the drug for a proposed population, depending on the benefits and risks of the therapy. In some cases, a decision can be made from the data submitted in the NDA or BLA, and in other cases, FDA may seek additional clarification on the data or input from an advisory committee. These committees include independent medical experts and patient representatives who can speak to the patient population's perspective on risk and benefit. Step number five, post-market safety monitoring. After a new product is approved and available to the public, FDA continues to monitor it for any safety issues that might become apparent over time. This ongoing surveillance includes routine inspections of drug manufacturing facilities and programs that allow manufacturers, medical professionals, and consumers to track and report safety concerns about approved drugs. If new safety concerns are detected, FDA may require changes to the drug label to inform doctors and patients and or require that the drug be removed from the market. These are the five steps of drug development and while this may seem like a long process, each step is important in order to protect the health and safety of all of us. Okay, this is kind of uh, videos by not uh, uh, in YouTube. So that I find is to explain in detail, uh, simplest, uh, how the drug is and the, the uh, drug and developments in the pipelines. So let's continue. So for the drug discovery and developments, uh, we have to admit that uh, the role of technologies will help to speed it up uh, our research findings. The first one usually we they are using approach uh, omic approach. You have heard about the genomics, proteomics, metabolomics is a very famous now. Uh, metagenomics and transcriptomics. And the second one, the bioinformatics and cheminformatics, uh, they are using um, platforms uh, like uh, computer softwares to predict the interactions and bindings and interaction. They have a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, <clears throat> um, softwares that we can use, uh, for example, uh, biodiscoveries. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, and then sector. So uh, for the recent example that for the drug and discoveries, what we can see uh, news and close to us is the COVID-19 vaccines. If we see it and we try to debate about the COVID-19 vaccines, why it already fast to, uh, to, to, to be on the market, we have to admit that they have a long and huge stories because uh, it's coming with a similar family with uh, coronavirus. Uh, we can take this kind of uh, example from the SARS uh, in 2002, which has happened in, first in China. And secondly, uh, after 10 years about that one, there we have MERS uh, in Saudi Arabia, Middle East, respiratory acute in 2012. So right now in 2021, we have uh, increased about the coronavirus. So because uh, the virus itself has been mutated so many times, we have alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon, and also lambda. They have, we're coming so many soon, but a variety of this kind of virus, because uh, as we know, as uh, they, they need to survive. But that's why they are mutated so many times and very fast, okay? Um, the, another, at the same time, uh, Johnson & Johnson have been starting a new trial for HIV vaccines. So, because this is the very, very old, I think more than 20 years disease about HIV and AIDS vaccine, but recently in 31st August, during our Independence Day, we, we get this kind of virus because uh, we, this kind of news because um, it's failed for the trial in, in Africa. So the trial, but um, this is because the efficacy after the, the, the study for the field trials, it's covered around 35.2% efficacy. So that's why if you see the, 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 the particular videos in the first step post a treatment, something like that, they are withdraw all the drugs. This is what we, uh, they are do, the FDA, or, and uh, very monitor very closely about this kind of, of, <clears throat> of uh, vaccines or drugs in the markets. So I just want to highlight a few things about the organic synthesis, why they are important in drug discoveries. Uh, that's why in my, my personal perspective, 
it's better for, for us as a natural product chemist, uh, at least know how to do the simple organic synthesis. That's why I'm working in these two fields. For the first examples, uh, this is the heroines. Um, there's a new drugs from the old poisons. They are very famous and cultivated extensively in, uh, in India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. That's why there are huge uh, problem with this kind of uh, heroines in the border with these three countries. So they are isolated from opium alkaloids here, very, very nice and very good uh, as a painkillers. So um, the second one is Taxol, very famous uh, anti-cancer drugs. Okay, this is extract from Pacific yew trees in Medi Mediterranean. And they are used to treatment ovarian, breast, lung, and uh, melanoma cancers. Okay. Uh, isolation of taxol from natural source is very wasteful because they are using bark to, to, uh, to isolate a few milligrams of this kind of compounds. So uh, that's why they are come up with the idea to synthesize, uh, to do a semi-synthetic method uh, to synthesize the natural precursors. This is what uh, our team in France, I'm quite blessed because uh, in uh, France, I'm working also with the lab actually produce another uh, kind of uh, analogs of taxol, we call taxol tech. And they are isolated from the leaf because uh, leaf doesn't take a long time to, to grow again and isolate 10 the isotyl bacatin. This is 10 acetyl bacatin. This is the tussle stru structures. And they are doing slightly modification of these uh, functional groups, okay? Instead of phenyl functional groups, they are using uh, third butyl functional groups. So they give a similar effects of tussle pair. So um, because for the total synthesis of a taxol itself, they are where involve so many steps, at the same time, if, if they are involved so many steps, it will reduce the final yield products. So for the retrosynthesis analysis of this kind of very interesting compounds, uh, we can see this is start cell structures. They are come up with the esterification reactions after we are doing retrosynthesis analysis. For this one, for the ketone, they are using oxygenation to give the OH functional groups. And again, this one is Shapiro reactions, memory coupling, and also oxygen formation to, to to, to give the oxygen uh, rings. So there are seven groups uh, working on this race, so the synthesis of taxol. Uh, for example, Halton groups, Nicolau, very famous natural products uh, synthesis. And Nishpesky groups, Wonder group, Kawajima from uh, Kawajima and Mura, Mukayama from Japan, uh, and also Takahashi groups in 2006. So uh, interesting uh, about Houghton groups and also uh, Nicola groups, okay, uh, both are working on in USA, the Houghton working in the Florida State Universities. And for the Professor Casey Nicola, during that time, they are working at the Scripps, University of California, Los Angeles, but now he already moved to Rice Universities. So they are submit the publications in um, 21st January, sorry. 21st January 1993, uh, and a few days later, uh, after Christmas, there are some uh, Professor Kesi Nopalao uh, submit another publication on 24th January 1994, a few days later. Okay, I think after New Year's and also after Christmas. So this is kind of. Uh, uh, approach that have been used by different groups. Okay, Takashi roots are by using geraninol. Alton groups they are using beta pactolin oxides. For nuclear groups they are using ethyl four hydroxy metabolite uh, two anoid. The defensive groups they are using Wonderland mixture ketones, very very famous uh, starting materials. For Wonder groups they are using verbenones. And uh, Kawajima groups, they are using propagate alcohols. And lastly, Mukayama groups, they are using this kind of peptides, uh, l serines amino acids. So the third one example, the third example is the indole alkaloids. Okay. Now they are actually from Ceterantus roses, very nice and beautiful, beautiful plants. And they are using for chemotherapy medications, typically using for the all types of cancer. 
and also Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-lung cell cancer, by given injection into veins, but they have a side effect. For example, uh, lost hair. Most of most of anti-cancer drug they have a kind of side effects. Uh, loss of white blood cells, uh, blood platelets, okay, uh, gastrointestinal problems, uh, and also high blood pressures, excessive sweating, depression, muscle cramps, vertigo, and also headaches. This is kind of a structure of vincristine and vincristines with different names of commercial drugs. The difference is the functional group in and functional groups, okay, and also because they have CH3 and uh, aldehydes. And if we study the, uh, the retrosynthesis of this compound is coming from the Catarantin and also Vindolin. Okay. For the second uh, generation so of uh, uh, indole colloids, uh, we know red beans. The same lab that I have been working since 2010 uh, synth uh, synthesized this kind of compounds by Professor Pote, the late Professor Pote and also uh, the Oncology Department of PFR uh, groups. And in this kind, uh, for the difference between venoral beans and also vinoplastin and vinoplastins, uh, they maintain this functional group, but they have the alkene functional group in this. And if we are working on the retrosynthesis, they're coming with a similar source, uh, catarantin and also vinoplastin. This is the major component, component of uh, catarantastrosis. For the protein strategies, uh, we know that uh, this vinoplastin and vinoplastin coming from the vindolin and uh, catarantin, but they are doing uh, modification from lurosines luro by using uh, this kind of catalyst. Uh, they will give for the, for example, they will cleave the epoxide rings to give the anhydro vinoplastins, and after that proceed with the few series operation to give the the difference between cataract and the vinoblastin and vincristines, uh, vinoblastin and also vinoblastins is the functional groups of, uh, instead of OH functional groups here, they have the alkene functional groups. The last one is a very old, old uh, drugs we call penicillins, okay. This is a penicillin analogs, okay because the challenge here is to synthesize the fourth member ring here because the, the, the angle strings of uh, carbons. So it's discovered by accidents uh, uh, from this card, a contaminated petri dish used uh, to grow the staphylococci gums. Uh, and it's found in St. Mary Hospital in London. And after that, uh, the, what we call, we get a penicillin to create it. <clears throat> so, I think that's all what we I can say, what we I can uh, I can share with everybody regarding the contribution of natural products in uh, drug and discoveries. I hope everybody uh, understands yeah. what I want to deliver to every uh, to you. So uh, we are open for Q and A sessions, and hopefully I can answer it. If not, I I'm happy to have your emails and I will try to find the answers. Yeah. I'll thank give you, you to uh, Dr. Rani. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Rani. Yeah, thank you, Fazmi, for your uh, nice lecture about the application of uh, some of the natural products. That is really uh, broad here, yeah? particularly when we are doing a synthesis here yeah, for the, the natural product. So I believe that uh, there's a lot of questions from the student and others, uh, other participants. So for that, I will invite the question and the question can be delivered to Dr. Azmi uh, by uh, uh, like uh, directly ask Dr. Azmi by, probably you can uh, raising your hand on this Zoom meeting or you can ask through the chat box. The question can be delivered in Bahasa also. Yeah, 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 can. Yeah, boleh, boleh, tak ada masalah. <laughs> I know Bahasa, it's okay. Yeah, very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the, the, uh, I will invite uh, the question to the student and also other participants uh, for to Dr. Asmi. 
Yeah, uh, Dr. Azmi, uh, when I see how uh, we can like develop mental, yeah, like mental has a lot of stereo center, something like that. So actually, uh, is it like a typical of natural product that is easy to be developed through synthesis or probably like uh, other, other methods no. can, can be used uh, instead of the synthesis? Okay. So uh, to answer this kind of question, I believe uh, um, we have to consider a few things uh, if we try to cultivate this kind of plants, because I believe the mental can be cultivated in a very uh, cool, not very, oh, uh, I think below than 20 degrees C's, uh, climates. I think, uh, I think Bandung is a very nice place to cultivate. Maybe you can try. So uh, I believe uh, nowadays uh, people have to shift to the synthetic, to the natural compounds. Mm -hmm. So I believe to, to convince people to move from synthetic and natural to natural compounds, we can cultivate and isolate. And uh, for example, like uh, what we do in together with UM, we cultivate Catarantus rosius. Mm. Uh, to 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 in hope that we can get the uh, vinblastine, vincristine, or vinoferins. So I hope uh, because we are in process to working how from extract we can directly coupling these two failures, uh, vincristine and vinblastine, uh, and finally I isolate as the uh, the compound that we need for the anti cancer drugs. This is what we can do now. Or we 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 plan to do now. So I hope I answered it, uh, your questions. Yeah. I, I think in my opinion, why uh, people from Western prefer to do to do to do more synthesis? First one, of course, they are doesn't have any source. Yeah. Uh, they have knowledge and technologies. But we are kind of blessed in Southeast Asia because we are a nice climate to to to, to plant, uh, for example, flower fruits and something like that. And that's why people from Western country love to collaborate with us. Because we have this kind of advantage. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Azmi. It's quite clear. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, uh, Pak Unang. Hello. Yeah. No, no. Hello, bro. Yeah, yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, maybe my my eyes a question. Yes, sir. Yes, bro. Yeah. I think, uh, Dr. Ajmi, I think we have uh, the same problem in natural product chemists. Yeah? After we isolate the active compound and after that, how to develop that compound is uh, until now is not solved. Yeah? In our experience also, maybe more than, more than 200 isolated compounds. Uh, they saw good activity, but how to develop develop that compound is still a problem. Maybe uh, according to your experiment, maybe you have some uh, suggestion or comments. Okay, uh, I, I just go through that uh, Prof Unan's group have been uh, isolated compound. Most of them coming from the very big uh structures uh, is kind of challenge for uh, for for the synthetic chemists to synthesize but nothing possible maybe we can do and synthesize this kind of compound maybe we have to train more specific organic synthesis to do that but um most of the isolate compound that we can see um normally is a tritypin types compounds maybe we can do the, some modifications but the problem is um in the basic research uh, level, we have so many beautiful results. And uh, if they are going to the clinical research and something like that, it give you the different results. This means we can, uh, something, something in between for the phase one, phase two is good. When they try to go to phase three, is uh, give the different result and we have to stop that one. But, but I think with the help of technologies, for example, omics approach and also Chemical informatics and bioinformatics, it will uh, channel us to do what we can do now. This is what I can do, and I can answer your question, Prof. Maybe we can have <laughs> we have a private discussion about this one. And I, I'm happy to do uh, to, 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 to work with you, Prof, uh, in future in terms of modification of compounds. This is what we, we, we try to do now because uh, to isolate itself for the single compounds is quite challenging. Yes. Uh, because in 
uh, our investigation, uh, usually we we find uh, the active compound from higher plants in the belong to Meliasi family. Uh, this, uh, I think, uh, this plants grow um, maybe take long time and uh, take maybe more than 10, 10 years uh, to produce that compound by uh, isolate compound. That plant is very typical. So maybe uh, as similar with your suggestion, maybe to use the bioinformatic or bio in silico, I think it's to take long, uh, take long time. So, uh, in our country, we have the three type of the commercial uh, natural product. Uh, we first we call jamu, and second yes. we, call, we call obat herbal terstandarkan. And the third is the phytopharmaca. So maybe uh, to solve this problem, maybe we, we can collaborate with the, the other field, for example, pharmacies and medicine to uh, utilize that uh, isolate compound. For example, you know Tongkat Ali. Tongkat yes. Ali uh, uh, yeah, contain the uh, active compound, but to become... Uh, Pure compound to develop pure compound is very difficult. So we can develop only good extract. I think it's possible. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, collaboration is the key for the utilize the natural product. I think. Yes, uh, I'm agree with you, Prof. So the closest example that we can see uh, recently is a traditional Chinese medicines. I see. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a uh, very uh, close. Everybody, even even the Euro European and Western country, try, uh, already uh, recognize this kind of uh, medicine. So yeah, we we can learn from them. Hopefully, we can find somebody from them and we learn from them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I am agree. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, Doctor Ajmi. I might be uh, the last question, Doctor Ani. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about the condition in Malaysia now? Okay, uh, the Malaysia condition is now is okay. Okay. So, um, uh, but uh, we've restricted uh, travel SOPs. So I'm not really sure whether we can welcome uh, the international visitor or not. But but it, we will okay. see on on November because okay. uh, they try the, the government try to leave it the, the, the MCOs movement control orders okay uh, we will see how is it going so yeah, big, there's a every day the cases is more than 10 cases so hopefully everybody everything will get normal soon by next yeah. hopefully so, because uh, i promised to my student to send to send to send him to pinang uh, ruhiat until now uh, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we, we cannot send uh, him to Penang to learn about NMR machine and sure, NMR bro. spectroscopy. Okay, so maybe there. if the condition back to normal, maybe I will uh, send the, our student to the to your laboratory. Inshallah, inshallah, bro. Okay, inshallah. Okay. So I I have I have a question that <laughs> can I read? Uh, okay, from Garin uh, Mahasiswa S1, apakah bisa jika kita modifikasi genik, genetik dari tumbuhan tertentu untuk mendapat senyawa yang kita harapkan? Adakah aktivitas biologi yang kita inginkan akan disesuaikan untuk genetiknya? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay, uh, there is some concerns uh, about the modified genetic uh, <coughs> plants. Uh, they have a huge uh, controversial in uh, in US, especially especially in corn, something like that. So I, I cannot I cannot uh, I cannot answer specifically on this one, but um, in some cases uh, there is one cases regarding taxote. They are doing also the cultivations of taxote uh, and also gen genetic modification. But I'm not sure I'm not really sure how far they can go for this kind of um, this kind of uh, activities. So maybe can or maybe. Cannot. This is uh, my answer. Maybe 50-50, for example, like that. Okay. For the micro microbiologists, maybe yes. Uh, we are doing biotransformation, something like that. Maybe they can do some modification of uh, compounds that we need. Maybe, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Garin, yeah, are, you, Garin. Are you okay, Garin? Okay. Okay. Garin, okay, yeah. I think it's quite clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I think. Uh. 
we have uh, 70 participants here and I'm still uh, yeah, uh, waiting for some question to Dr. Azmi because we still have plenty of time. Uh, oh, Hindi, oh, Farabi. Hindi, yes, you can ask directly to Dr. Azmi, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Rani, for the opportunity. Yes, and please. thank you also for wait. <laughs> the uh, echo. Yeah, echo. Thank you also, uh, Dr. Azmi, uh, for the interesting talk. Uh, there was such an uh, interesting talk, I think. Uh, I, I have uh, one question, actually. Uh, Nowadays, we know that the syn uh, organic synthesis can be achieved using the microorganism, such like uh, maybe uh, uh, fung fung uh, fungi, jamur, yeah? and uh, also the other kind of uh, microorganism. Uh, what do you think compare with the conventional synthesis when we use the, this type of microorganism, microorganism? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the most pro the, the major problem if we do biotransformations, I call biotransformations if we use fungi, to they have some limitation they can do. For example, if you want to hydrocylase, for example, uh, cleavage the alkenes, and some uh, the worst case scenario you cannot control the reactions. So in organic game, in, in, in organic synthesis, but we what we uh, what we try to uh, to to do is we have a power to control reactions. So for example, we want uh, only uh, this particular size is uh, react with the catalyst, for example, not this modification happen in this size. So this is uh, the most important that you have to consider. But the first problem, uh, in my opinion, okay, I just uh, said based on my opinions, if you want to do, do trans uh, biotransformation, you have to know what you want to do. So for example, the closest example that uh, I plan to do in future by, by using uh, synthesis of oligo silvinoids, by using horse, horse uh, peroxidase catalyst, uh, it's a reddish, uh, reddish catalyst. So, but the problem is what we can face is uh, during that time we need the, um, the accurate temperature to do that, to make sure that in particular enzyme is working properly. And at the same time, we cannot predict what kind of reactions until we get the final products. This is the most challenging if we want to, to do the bio transformations. There is a few groups in, in, in Malaysia working on that. Uh, the first one is uh, University uh, Technology Mara. Uh, I'm not sure you have been heard that one, uh, especially the uh, uh, Professor Dr. Hadiani working mm. on that with collaboration of HEJ, Professor Iqbal Chowdhury, and also uh, in, in HEJ, Pakistan. They have uh, some small group are working on the, that particular biotransformation. I hope I hope I answer your questions. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, it's a good to, pill to ask yes, for, yeah, but... Yeah, it's good, uh, but I, I want to ask you more questions. Is it okay? Uh, well, you can, you can ask. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, maybe the problem that I uh, found when I carry out the conventional synthesis is a, a byproduct. In a small scale, maybe we can uh, find out what is the byproduct and how about in the industrial scale or scale up uh, uh, size, uh, how we can avoid this such kind of uh, byproduct. Did you know the maybe the particular strategy for uh, that? Uh, I don't have any answer for that, but uh, because uh, some of that uh, is a secretive regarding the synthesis of. Uh, but uh, what we can say is uh, they are use, usually prefer to use uh, with the ambient temperature ration. That's why. Uh, oh, and at the same time, they are not preferred to do the protect and the protect reactions because it will cost a lot of time and also probably the yield will be reduced. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Azmi, for you. your. I answer. hope I hope I answer it. Yes. Thank you. Finally, Second I meet you, uh, Farabi, <laughs> because I, I see your names uh, in most of the paper of Profuna. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Now I just joined uh, in the in the Prof Unang's group in here in uh, Universitas Pajajaran. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, Hopefully, I can meet you in person. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah. Asmi. Sure, sure, sure. So, so yeah, thank, thank you, you. Dr. Asmi. Yeah. Dr. Asmi, any question? Uh, are there yes, another one, Soraya? Uh, Soraya, yes. Yeah. Ibu Soraya, mangga. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Hi, Ibu Soraya. Can you hear my voice? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 bro. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I want to know that what is the most important point when we choose natural compounds to be a drug candidate? Drug candidate. How the so. strategy, as we know, uh, is a, a, a many kind of uh, um, plants and then uh, the activity and the toxicity, toxicity of the compound. What the... Uh, your opinion. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, in my opinion, in general, what we can do is uh, the first one, there is a, for example, if we uh, try to search the compound that only uh, uh, related with cancers, uh, make sure that particular compound doesn't affect the normal cell. That's the most important thing. Because uh, if they affect the normal cell, how about the selective index? How about the percentage? This is what, what we can uh, we can we can measure that one. This is the first one. It means the selectivity of uh, compound to interact or react with the uh, cancer cells. So the second one uh, that that we can do is uh, how we can cater the side effect for that particular drugs or compounds. Uh, I guess uh, for the for the uh, for example, if we isolate the compounds and we get the compounds, we test in vitro with the cell cancer, and don't forget to run with the normal cell. This is kind of indicator for you to apply, apply the big runs mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to get to or to proceed with the uh, in vivo studies. And during that time, maybe you can uh, play uh, so many essays, for example, uh, what we call uh, animal model studies. Uh, you mm -hmm. can start with uh, rat, okay, mm -hmm. first. And after that, you can proceed with the small uh, rabbits, uh, mm -hmm. primates, and first one, first two, and first three. Uh, I think to go from the first uh, single candidate compounds to the, it's a long, yes. long, 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 <laughs> long, long, long way. But, oh but for, the, uh, for the knowledge, it's good to have this kind of project. Because uh, in personal, uh, I will present this work in IAC because we already start uh, to, uh, to find the, to isolate the compound in 2008. Right. The compound is very simple, but the activity is very bombastic. And we have to stop because these kind of compounds have, uh, have uh, not promising where they are, we are going to the next phase. So uh, there's a long way because still now I'm doing that particular compound and doing synthesis. I hope I can share during that uh, ISC conference. ISC. Next month. Yeah. I hope I, I can answer your, your, your question, Bu Soraya. Yes, yes. I'm mm. It's quite challenging to, 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 to have uh, the ideal uh, way to, <laughs> to find a good candidate for, for the drugs, but nobody knows. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's very pricely and... Uh, yeah, it takes so many times. <laughs> so <laughs> we must choose the, the, the one to, uh, to step forward the, 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 the journey. It, it is uh, so, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the uh, answer. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Bu Soraya. Bu Tati, mau tanya. Oke, okay, mau tanya. Thank you very much, Dr. Azmi. It's your nice presentation. Uh, it's uh, to the general. Now is the time of the pandemic, <laughs> Dr. Azmi. Is there any research on natural product to prevent or treat on uh, COVID-19 in Malaysia? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> It's a good question. So uh, I guess um, during that time, uh, uh, our vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellor, get a call from Ministry of uh, Health and also Ministry of Education, including Ministry of uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation. They asked uh, who, which university can do vaccines. Mm -hmm. 
So unluckily, USM is not listed. So uh, we are doing, uh, they, they have two universities are working on vaccine. One of them is uh, UM mm-hmm. because they have, have uh, good facilities uh, in, uh, regarding the, the, the second level facilities uh, regarding coronavirus. So I think for that particular works, they are trying to, to, to do the vaccine compared to the single drugs compounds. But based on my readings, uh, it could be quinazoline compounds is a good candidate mm. for, 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 the, for the virus because uh, we try to synthesize that particular compound now. Mm. And I believe uh, I will find uh, a few collaborators in Indonesia to, to run the ACs. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's from he from Mumbai yeah, okay. to, to work yeah. on that. So this, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. could be maybe in Indonesia they will find a, a, a okay. huge, a nice compound to do that. Okay, thank you for your information. Good luck, Dr. Aismi. Thank you, Bu. Makasih, Bu Tati. Ya, ada siapa lagi yang mau tanya? Insyaallah, yeah. kalau boleh saya jawab. Yeah. Kalau tak boleh okay. saya. Another question in the chat yes, box. Siska, Siska, okay. We know finding new drugs. We will face many steps. One of the steps is about pharmacologies in addition to computational use. Is there any method to identify the pharmacodynamics or pharmacokinetics? Is there the, another method? Uh, okay, pharmaco. Uh, I, I cannot answer specifically about pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics because it's related with the pharmacies. My background is not pharmacies. I'm chemist, actually. So uh, new drugs. Uh, it could be another way to find the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics. Yes, agreed to do that because it's kind of a branch uh, and we need that data if we can, if we want to fill from the NDA files uh, or approve uh, for, for the license uh, to, to start to clinical trials. So we need that particular data pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetics. Yeah. So I hope, uh, uh, I'm sorry I cannot uh, answer specifically this kind of question because it's out of my topics. Mm-hmm. So because my background is uh, uh, natural products. Yeah. Okay, Siska. Okay. okay. Yeah. Another yeah. question? Yeah. From the student? From the student? Yeah. yeah, we have 20 students mm-hmm. for this subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Oh, still, Siska. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, another question from other participants or probably lecturers to Dr. Azmi for this uh, interesting topics, application of natural product in industry. Uh, yeah. yeah, based on your uh, experience, like uh, you mentioned about uh, five steps yeah, uh, in, the, in the drug discovery. So uh, the drug that like have uh, like now present in the market now uh, are most of them like a synthetic drug or probably directly obtained from the plants. Uh, what I can say now, most of the drug is coming from synthetic or hemisynthesis uh, compound. For example, like Tafsote by Pierre Fad, it's a semi-synthetic. They isolate the core structure of tasote from the leaf mm-hmm. and doing a, a synthesis uh, by doing some modification of functional groups and get a tasote. But I guess because uh, we have to understand the industry, how they play around, they doesn't want uh, the most important things they have to uh, produce the chemicals or the drugs with the chips, cheap and also time consuming. So yeah. they have to consider that one. So I, I guess for the, maybe most of them is coming from the same thing. Even the paracetamol that we have is uh, coming from the salicylic acids. Yeah, By yeah, doing yeah. some acetylation reactions, so, so we get that one. So I guess it's nothing natural now in the world, nothing but uh, they have some movement, even there is small movement to introduce the natural uh, chemicals, something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but somehow like total synthesis is really difficult, yeah, particularly yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah. 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 Uh, like some of the chemicals are really hard to be obtained or to be entered to Indonesia. So yeah, semi-synthetic is another option probably. Yeah? Yes, yeah. correct. Agreed, indeed. 
Yeah, because uh, they have so, so many uh, rules and regulations uh, if you want to order some rare chemicals, for example. Even the acetic and for for us in Malaysia, it takes around six months six in months. advance yeah. because we have right. to fill the forms and we have to declare everything. We yeah. cannot in, not involve in heroines and drug dealers. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar here. <laughs> yeah, this kind of problems, you know. Uh, yeah. Another problem for us, yeah, mm-hmm. for synthesis. Yeah. yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we still have plenty of time. Still waiting. Yeah, for yeah. I just time. prepared a, a small yeah. presentation about this topic for today. Yeah. So I'm happy to to interact with everybody because uh, it's quite. I think almost two years I'm not travel. <laughs> Same. <It's made> me, <laughs> and almost one years I don't see my parents, so there's a problem. Oh. oh. Because I'm still in the north, my parents stay in the, in the north. south. Yeah. So oh. I have to travel 400 kilometers to, to oh, reach wow. them. So. Yeah, it's a long way to go, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, students, question? You can ask, like, you know, in Bahasa Indonesia, Dr. Azmi. Yeah, yeah boleh. Bahasa. <laughs> Kalau saya salah paham, saya minta Dr. Rani nanti tolong translate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, probably uh, we have Erina. Erina, do you have question to Dr. Azmi? Yeah, Erina is going to uh, do like what we call it semi-synthesis of kind of uh, compound yeah Erina yeah is going to study in Osaka University Osaka nice yeah okay. yeah he's like uh, try to developing like a, a natural product with uh, glycan to be developed as like anti-inflammatory compound if I'm not mistaken he's saying uh, she in Osaka now no, no, not yet. Ah, because uh, okay. it's uh, now there's some restriction. So the yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Really Even my, my student, uh, which is a uh, get a scholarship from Hokkaido, yeah, doesn't yeah. manage to get in, so have to wait for a while. Yeah, yeah, have to yeah, wait yeah. also. Yeah. Okay, Arina, do you have a question, probably to Dr. Azmi? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asmi, for the nice presentation. It's really interesting. You. Yeah, uh, I have a question. In natural product chemistry, especially for the isolation of natural product, uh, one of the problem is the natural product, uh, the isolated compound is in limited amount. Uh, and yeah, and one of the novelty of the natural product uh, isolation research is the novel compound. Is there any suggestion for how do we get the new compound? But in the in the in the okay, dalam jumlah yang cukup okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's me. Yeah, understand. dalam jumlah yang cukup uh, for the further for the further. Uh, identification and for the further biological testing because the limited amount of compound is one of the problem uh, for the isolation, uh, isolation. Okay, okay. Uh, I understand the question very well. Uh, I hope so. So there is a few uh, challenges when you are doing natural product chemistry. So the, the first one is the limited and um, limited amount of compounds. I, I I think you can get maybe less than ten milligrams or ten, less than two milligrams. So uh, another one is uh, maybe maybe, but uh, you can do is you have to work with the you uh, synthesis organic. You doesn't have any choice. You you have to work with synthesis organic to synthesize the compound. There's an options. The second one, if you uh, the second que- approach, uh, what I understand from uh, er- er- Erna's question is how you want to find the new compounds. Okay, if you get a major compounds, this is what I'm, I'm doing now. If you get a major compounds, you can do slightly modifications. For example, uh, alkylation reactions, just uh, modify, modify simple modified functional the groups in, uh, to get a more diversified compounds. This is another questions. 
But with the technologies now to elucidate the compounds, uh, in my personal opinions, uh, we have 500 megahertz, but we are using the micro, micro probes for NMR and also micro capillary tubes. Oh. We have that kind of technologies. And if you are, because they are working under below temperature, if we can reduce the temperature by measuring that particular uh, compounds in NMR by using cryoprobes under minus 75, yeah. you can reduce the noise of uh, NMR and you can get a very fine and nice spectra. In my experience, uh, I have 0 0.8 milligrams and I get, there's a new compounds, a new, a new compounds and 0 0.8 milligrams. And I managed to also doing the uh, ACs. Nowadays, what I can see in Japan and also in Europe, they are doing nano, nanomolar concentration. They are working on nanomolar concentrations. Wow. Sometimes uh, based on my collaborations, uh, they ask only one milligrams. Yeah. Uh, the, the issue is how you handle that particular precious compounds <laughs> and how you keep it. Uh, yeah. This is very important. That's why I, you know, for my students, I always see them every day and advise them, keep your sample uh, wisely. Sometimes I ask them, for example, indole alcohol is very sensitive with acids, with air. I ask them to keep in nitrogen every day in amber glass. They, you, First, you have to understand the nature of your compounds. If your compound have so many OH, for examples, you have to very well and uh, uh, meticulous about how you keep your sample because it's easily to oxidize something like that and give you some many mixture compounds. I hope I answering uh, your, your, your answers a little bit. Okay, Erna, okay. I wish you good luck, Erna, uh, because nowadays uh, people who are working on synthesis and natural product is very, uh, not many, based on my experience in Malaysia, yeah. especially, because people right now prefer to work in metabolomics, uh, the fast way, how to do it, yeah. not the, the, the old school. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay, you. there is another question. Well, yeah, from Garin. Well, Yeah. From Garin, okay. Yeah. Menurut pandangan saya tentang obat dari isolasi ban alam yang terkadang sulit dimumikan. Okay, wait. Apa? Soalnya mana ya? Oh, pandangan pandangan saya. Okay. <laughs> pandangan. Oh, pandangan saya. Yeah, okay, there is a pandangan. there is a big challenge when we do natural product to get a pure compounds. Um, Uh, based on my experience when I'm, because I'm working with French since 2010. So uh, I see how it works. Uh, they are proof, uh, normally in natural product labs, they have HPLC. So when I, I, I came back in 2019 and I said, I don't have HPLC, they said, what? And they said, uh, it's quite, it's quite, uh, It's quite strange if I say I don't have HPLC, but um, yeah, I have to admit we have uh, so many problems, especially for the impurities. So to, to get that ones, um, yeah, I don't have any any uh, suitable answer for that one. But there is a big challenge so if we have impurities. Sometimes it will affect uh, the activities or sometimes they will give a secondary effects in terms of the activities and also yeah. the compounds itself. So, but you have to understand sometimes they are working synergistic. So with, with, the, with the essays that we do. So we have to understand how they are interact, whether they are it's a competitive, non-competitive approach. Uh, so there are so many things that, that we have to explore after we, before we come up with the conclusion that this particular compound is okay or not, or extracts, something like that. Okay, uh, Garin, I hope I, I answer your question. There is nothing to do with, uh, there's a big problem if we have impurities. Yes, okay. Yeah, another uh, question from Okay, the question. Okay, Izin okay, dalam eksplorasi metabolik sekunder di Malaysia sendiri, apakah dalam penelitian Malaysia mempunyai dalam tradisi eksplorasi ekonomi? Yes, uh, we have uh, our own uh, pharmacopoeia regarding the traditional medicines, but Uh, the problem and challenge to explore about this kind of uh, traditional medicines because uh, our body is NPRE, uh, very restricted. 
if we fail one phase, we are already, already then for, for, to proceed with the next steps. So uh, at the same time, some, uh, based on my experience, they are really secretive. They doesn't want to collaborate with everybody. I don't know why. Uh, maybe they have the, yeah, your project is your project. My project is my own. So there are no, there are no, there are no, uh, the spirit of sharing. Uh, maybe, I, I'm not really sure about this one. But uh, recently, the ministry have opened their eyes to, to working on the uh, Ketum, Mitrigina Sipiosa, as the replacement for um, drug. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, for example, like that. Eh? So they, they try to develop the, the particular uh, extracts or drinks or tonic for that particular plants. Okay, I, I hope I answer your questions. Uh, yeah. uh, Faiza Mayra. Yeah. Okay. Another question uh, from Padeden. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Padeden. Ah, okay. It's not to ever watch interesting movies. Okay. Thank you, Padeden. Yeah. Okay, okay, nice. Okay, but I'm not sure what I can say. What is specific thing related to medicine? Okay, what is special thing related with medicinal chemical activities? So, what it means? <laughs> it's too general. Uh, yeah, medicine. Um, okay, for, for example, uh, what they have in Malaysia problem now. So, okay, I just uh, goes to the blueprints what our government have been highlighted. We are preferred to working on the cancer first, the obesity problems, uh, especially and non-communicable disease. They are working on that in, in our country. They are working on that. Uh, dengue, uh, malaria is a big, big, big problems and also cancer. If you go to the Europe's, they are who prefer to work on anti leishmanial uh, activities because they have a problem with that. Uh, what else? TB. Yes, this is a very old uh, old disease, but ancient disease. But the, we don't find any 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 solution for that. Okay. Yeah. So what else? Uh, I mean, medicinal chemistry, uh, yeah. special things about medicinal chemistry. Mm, in my opinions, because uh, in personal, I, I love to see the compounds, the structures. Yeah. So uh, in terms of that, the second one is uh, the compound, the ability of that compound itself to, 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 to synthesize it. This is what I can see in medicinal chemistry. So, because we can see the compound and the applications. So, this is uh, the, the interesting about the medicinal chemistries. But we have to work again uh, or take along with the another experts, for example, for pharmacists and biologists to, to go further and, and also uh, doing formulation for that particular compounds. So, I hope I answer your questions, Padre Okay. Yeah, Padre I hope, yeah, I think it's quite clear, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pak. Oke, okay, yeah. terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Pak Dik Dik, yeah. please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> terima kasih, Dokter Azmi. Nah, saya coba bertanya dalam bahasa Indonesia bar, biar nanti mahasiswa yang lain berani bertanya juga. Betul. Iya, <laughs> yeah, boleh-boleh, Pak. Sila, sila. <laughs> Dokter Azmi, dalam isolasi senyawa bahan alam Uh, seringkali ketika kita mengisolasi sampel yang sama, ekstrak yang sama, berulang-ulang, tapi hasilnya tidak selalu sama. Ya, betul. Bahkan kadang kita mengulang hanya dengan waktu yang berbeda, dari sampel yang berbeda, hasilnya pun berbeda. Sangat berbeda. Nah, ini... banyak dihadapi oleh mahasiswa kita, kadang saya juga seperti itu. Nah, mungkin dari pengalaman Dr. Azmi, kira-kira uh, faktor apa, parameter apa, yang kita bisa mengurangi hal-hal tersebut, sehingga walaupun kita menggunakan teknik-teknik konvensional dengan kolom biasa dan lain sebagainya, kita bisa menghasilkan reprotubilitas atau pengulangan yang relatif baik. Gitu. Mungkin itu Dr. Azmi, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak Didi. Okay, this is a very interesting questions, and I have uh, I face the same problems. Okay, 
because uh, during my PhD, uh, I'm choose to work on Endendra kingiana, which is very uh, for tropical uh, tropical plants. And uh, when I coming back during my postdoc in UMS, I give the same plant but different sample collections in the south. I'm in the north, so uh, they isolate very different compounds, totally different compounds. They uh, she she doesn't manage to isolate the same similar compounds as I isolate before. So the most important thing what we can consider is the um, location that we, we take, the first one, whether it's a lowland or highlands, because it, it will give the, some stress to the plant so to, to, to produce the secondary metabolites. So if you can manage to uh, isolate, uh, no, uh, collect the compound, uh, collect the plant for the same sites, it will help a lot. Uh, in Malaysia itself, the north uh, area is, an, uh, the south area is the acidic, acidic soil. So that's why they have a different, different uh, distribution of compound compared to the north one. Because not one, uh, the north area is uh, more the tropical uh, areas, uh, not lowland, not highland, in the middle, middle range land. So uh, I believe they are uh, probably give uh, the contribution for that one. The second one uh, is depend on the when you collect. The, 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 because the, some plants have the flowers, whether they are bloom or not, it will consider that one also. Maybe when they are bloom, the flower bloom, or they have the fruits during that time, they will give more interesting compound compared to the non-seasoning uh, duration when you try to collect. Yeah. I think this is the, 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 the reason that why, why we can find uh, the different distribution of compounds. This is what I can answer uh, about the question from uh, Padi Day. I hope so. <laughs> Terima kasih Dr. Azmi. Menarik. Terima kasih. Ya, kita ada masalah yang sama sebenarnya. <laughs> We have the same problem about this one. So I, I don't have the specific answer for that. Yeah. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Ya. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, the student can ask question like Pak Dik-Dik in bahasa ya Pak Dik-Dik. <laughs> ya yeah, boleh, boleh. Insya Allah saya faham. Bahasanya lebih kurang sama. Bahasan bertanya yang lain. <laughs> yeah. mm, another question from the student or other participants? Uh, because like, yeah, it's not only from UNPAD, I think from outside UNPAD as well. If you have a question to Dr. Asmi, please. Uh, we are still having a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I think there's no more question, Dr. Azmi, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, we just heard about a very interesting topic in today's lecture. And yeah, uh, yeah, no more question, yeah? Right. No more questions, okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, thank you very much to Dr. Azmi for a nice uh, lecture and also nice discussion today. And yeah, oh, one more question, Dr. Azmi. Is it okay? Well, okay, it's okay. It's, uh, I'm happy to answer it. <laughs> the last, the last, last question. Last yeah, I think it's last question, question, maybe. Yes, yes, Prof. Unang, yes. Uh, hello, Dr. Azmi. Thank you for your presentation. I just wonder what is the most difficult part of drug discovery that you have experienced? Thank you. From Pirda. Yeah, you can directly. Answer. Okay, uh, for for drug discoveries, uh, I don't have much experience because uh, the first uh, drugs that we we try to synthesize it uh, finish it. Uh, uh, it's not a clinical; it's a preclinical phase, so we have to stop. This is a uh, what we can do, and uh, the hope we can continue soon about this one. What we can do further, so. Um, The most for the part difficult discovery. Okay, so uh, the most part uh, in natural product chemistry is uh, to isolate. Also, if you manage to isolate the compounds, uh, you will have uh, difficulties to determine the the assays. Uh, no, the, the 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 compounds itself. This is the most important thing because I spent uh, based on my experience till now. Uh, I'm reading the NMR, so almost one week I try to solve the compound. It's not solved anymore. <laughs> So it will take a time to, for me to, to understand because uh, there's a lot of work to do at the same time. So this uh, 
this is the, the, the most difficult part uh, to, to get the answer because uh, for the ACs, I guess we have already uh, very concrete SOP, the steps that we want to do for the ACs, uh, it's not very difficult. If you want to, pro furthermore, you have to think about the what is the suitable ACs that you need to proceed to answering your hypothesis. And some, some of the researchers love to do um, the modelings in silico studies, how you want to relate the experimental and also theoretical experiments, how you want to relate and answering the, all the objectives you have been listed. I think there's a, in general, that I can answer your, 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 your question, Firda. I hope so. Okay, because uh, for the drug discovery, I don't have much experience about this one. Okay. Yeah, okay, Firda. I think it's, uh, yeah, it has been answered by Dr. Azmi. Yeah, I think that's uh, the last question for uh, today's lecture. Once again, thank you, Dr. Azmi, for nice uh, lecture and also nice discussion. And also thank you to all of the participants for your active participation. So, but before we close the seminar, we would like to take a picture together. Okay. Yeah, just a moment. I will just let me stop sharing. Yes, yeah, I have. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, all of the participants.